Hey there, beautiful sunrise this morning, and I have to admit something, I am not a morning person. I know I'm a farmer, but I'm just, I don't like getting up before the sun comes up. I've always been that way, and now with daylight savings, it makes it even more challenging. <laughs> but I did get up early enough to see the sunrise this morning. But anyways, big day today. We're gonna get plants in the nursery, and we have a few things to do to finish up to do that. And I know I've been doing a lot of content on this channel about building out this nursery. Uh, from Rimmel. It's fantastic, but it's taken a lot of time to build it and get everything running Especially with the automation and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna get plants in here, but we got a couple more things to do uh, We just finished up putting the louver Motor controls in so let me show you that I mentioned in a previous video that we're gonna be hooking up the motor for the louvers With the fan on the opposite side of the greenhouse and that way you get a cross breeze and we're gonna set up for two-stage cooling So one will kick on and then as it gets warmer the second one will kick on so they're both not running all the time so we already had the louvers installed and this morning we hooked up the motor. We mounted it here with the chain. We got a spring here to hold tension on it. Also hooked up the, the second thermostat, got all the wiring done, which is fantastic. So let me show you this working here. Opens really nice. And closes, perfect. Some of you guys were asking about showing the blower motor working and I totally forgot to do that in the last video. So let me show you here. It's kind of hard to show you, but it's definitely poofed up here and there's definitely an air insulation layer. So it's working really well. I think it's a little bit of dialing in with the damper here to get it right, but we should be all good. As I said, everything in here is now done. We just got to work on the ground. Here I am from the outside. You can kind of see the, the poofiness here, hopefully. Came in here to smooth it out as best as possible and Satin Hill Farm, everything sloped in every direction. So in here, you know, it slopes this way and it slopes that way. So there's no way we're gonna get it level, but we just kind of wanted to smooth it out a good amount so it wasn't like a trip hazard in here and be easy and comfortable to work in here. So all we did was on the high spots, you know, we just took the broad fork and kind of like broke it up a little bit and then use a shovel and a rake to try to spread it around and smooth it out a little bit. The ground is very compacted here with the clay but we got it, I think as close as we're gonna get it for, for the most part. And I put a lot of thought into what I'm gonna use to cover the ground here. And I think the ultimate solution is to use gravel. And the thing about that I didn't wanna do is it is expensive and it's also a very permanent solution because if you ever change things up or anything like that, then you have a bunch of gravel in your yard and that's a nightmare to try to get out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it with landscape fabric and Traditionally, I think most people use black landscape fabric because it's readily accessible. And the thing is, I got a suggestion from Rimmel and some other places to use white landscape fabric because when you have the black landscape fabric on the ground, it's gonna soak up a lot of heat. And one thing we're gonna be battling is the heat in here in the summer. And I know a lot of you guys have expressed concern about that. With the fans running and the louvers open, it moves a lot of air and is very effective at cooling. And we're probably gonna add a light shade cloth on the, on the tunnel as well to try to keep it cool. But we'll see how it goes. But I think we're getting a lot of cooling just out of the fans and louvers. And keeping white landscape fabric on the ground, I think is gonna help a lot uh, to reflect the heat and keep it cooler in here. So I got this uh, sent to me by Bootstrap Farmer. So big shout out to Bootstrap Farmer for hooking me up with some white landscape fabric. I will leave a link down below for you guys to check it out if you're looking for white landscape fabric. It's kind of a little bit harder to find, but they definitely have it. I will uh, keep you guys posted about this and let you know how it's working out. But now we're just gonna basically cover the whole ground in here with landscape fabric and we start bringing in tables. Hey Gene, white landscape fabric? Are we gonna have to take our shoes off before we come in the house? Yes, we must keep it clean. Got all this down, and it kind of feels like going to grandma's house. Like you have to take your shoes off before you walk on the white carpet. I'm just all joking aside, like it will get dirty, it's fine. I'm like just feeling weird about it being really white. Uh, first impressions with it, it's very like heavy duty. It feels really good. Um, so yeah, if you wanna if you wanna check out the product, I'll leave it down below. Uh, but it definitely feels like very durable, uh, and I'll keep you guys posted about the durability and long term. Uh, how it lasts and, and it wears and stuff like that. I, we couldn't put it, pull it super tight just because the ground is so bumpy, so we can make adjustments later. Uh, one thing we did was we made sure we overlapped it going down this way, kind of like shingles, so if dirt or anything um, gets on the floor, which it will, uh, it'll be going downhill and won't get trapped under the layers of landscape fabric, but so far so good. Now time to work on some tables. Now that we got the landscape fabric down on the ground, we gotta start getting some tables in there so we can put some plants in there. And I mentioned this before that we're gonna be mainly using pallets for tables and kind of just building them out of whatever we can get our hands on for cheap. 
I think in the future it would be really cool to upgrade to getting those fancy nursery tables, but for right now, we're gonna make it work with this. I also don't know the layout that we want in there, so if we can experiment with this and see what works, and you know, then we'll know after a little while uh, what we're looking for. But this is a pallet, uh, the longer pallet that we got with uh, one of the tunnels from Farmer's Friend, and Gene put fencing top rail as legs and some scrap wood to kind of hold it together. And this is kind of an example of some of the stuff we're gonna be doing. Also moved in my potting bench in there. So we're gonna figure out a lot of those details, but we gotta get some stuff in there. And I just wanna point out too that this table's been instrumental in us in the last, for us in the last few months building. We've been using this as like a workbench. So it's really nice to have a table when you're doing projects. And one thing to point out about the metal legs too is a friend of mine told me that it's super important to have metal legs because it keeps the mice from uh, crawling up the legs and getting to your start. So we're gonna move this in, get some trays in there and uh, probably build another table or two today. See how far we get. Got a couple of the tables in here and we unfortunately weren't able to build any more today just because we didn't quite have the hardware that we needed. But I think the layout is basically gonna be like, you know, tables along the outside and probably a couple of tables in the middle here. And so this is the, one of the pallets we're gonna use in the middle here. And then that's the table that was outside as the workbench. So we got some trays in here. Still some trays inside and germinating where it's warmer. And for now, I'll probably just germinate things inside as it's still a little cold out and then bring them out here. And then over here, this is the potting bench that you guys have seen plenty of videos that was in the front of my house. And you guys don't know, but a lot of the wood on here was repurposed from an old place structure that was on the property when we bought it. So super cool, just reused wood and it's lasted a few seasons. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking to keep it working okay. But generally, uh, you know, I got some trays in here. We should be good. We'll probably get another table built soon so we can get some more out here be able to start potting up some of the peppers and uh, cucumbers in a couple weeks and stuff like that we'll need more trays for. But again, this is a work in progress and I'm really excited these, uh, you know, to have plants growing out here and take advantage of this beautiful nursery. Another thing we got done today was to finish clearing out this whole space here next to the shed. And in a previous video, I talked about getting rid of a lot of the you know, material that was used for the build out, a lot of um, you know little bits of wood and metal and stuff like that. So we cleared all that out and today we, Finally cleared out by moving that table and then put some wood chips down here to really clean it up. I really like having some open space that's nicely mulched, feels really pleasant to walk around and feels tidy. And I think as we're making that transition into production mode here, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting closer. Just having open space that's nice and tidy is just fantastic. And if you guys were ever curious about what's going on in the back here, you probably haven't been following the channel the whole time, but this is my original chicken run out here. This was my coop <laughs> and this was the run. And then for a while I was brooding chicks in here and then letting them run out in here for a couple weeks before they went out the uh, the adult hen. So that's what's, what was going on here. We're gonna eventually take this out and probably mulch this and just keep it tidy and open. It's nice to have some open space that's just clean. So that's what's gonna be going on here but really happy to have the nursery in operation. Got plants in there and we'll put more plants in there as we get ready for springtime and you know, getting the peppers and the cucumbers and stuff like that potted up and then put out in the tunnels. And a lot of that stuff in there is full right now, but you know, we'll be doing successions and I'm gonna continue with the interplanting and all that fun stuff and I'll take you guys along. So hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you in the next one. I've never really been one to want to get up before the sun comes up. So with daylight savings time, I can't, ah! Let me show you this working. So when I turn this temperature down, oh, that's the wrong one. I had to pick which one, G. I, you know, I didn't, okay. <laughs> Fan louver combo so we can have a staged cooling. So let me show you that. So I turn the temperature down and the fan, oh, Gene, this the thing came off, dude. Just what we do here, working on, on the slope here, working at the hill, Satin Hill Farm. So, you know, sloping this way and this way. So there's no way we're gonna get a level in here without digging out a ton. And that was kind of uh, a lot of the things. And then another thing is the white landscape fabric. If you have the whole ground covered in black landscape fabric, that's gonna, that's gonna soak up. Mm -hmm.